We've had some technical difficulties this week. Hoping you can hear me. Uh, otherwise, I will be sending this out via email post-class. We're going to focus on the lower legs today. Well, legs in general, hips. Um, and as I always say, uh, body is a system, so typically you'll feel sensation where the tissue is tightest. It might not be in the quote-unquote target area. Um, you're going to probably want blankets, all the all the restorative props, blankets, cushions, um, making yourself a little nest of support. And so um, what we'll do is start out in a child's pose, <laughs> and then we'll move forward and kind of work deeply into the hips. Okay. So if child's pose, like if knees are sensitive, always always patting the knees. You can slide a blanket underneath them. And if the forehead's pretty far away from the floor in child's pose, you can slide a folded blanket or pillow underneath the forehead. He could also take something in between hips and calves. Whatever you wanna do with your arms, you can stretch them forward. You could also pull them back down by the feet. You can see which one of those feels best on the neck and the shoulders. Sometimes I like to bend my elbows and place my hands underneath my forehead. And we'll take a few moments here to settle and to become aware of the breath. To start to breathe intentionally in and out through the nose. And we'll take about five to six breaths here to settle. And then right away, you can notice where you're feeling sensation in the body right now, what body parts are talking to you. Last three breaths here. And then we'll come forward into a tabletop shape and we'll set up our first hold, which will be a lunge, a low lunge. Um, and so you're going to probably want to bring some props underneath the hands or the elbows or the forearms. Um, that could be a stool or a chair or your couch or a massive stack of pillows, like what I'm going to use. Okay, so let's take, uh, for the sake of direction, let's take the left foot forward because this will be kind of like a little sequence for the legs. So left foot forward, right knee on your mat. Uh, if you're with me in vinyasa this week, we were kind of taking a look at the lower leg and seeing if we could get that front thigh towards the back of the calf and the knee over the toes. And you could take a few moments to do this. Um, that just gives you a little bit of information about the calf and the lower leg muscles. So um, I, I just think it's an interesting inquiry in terms of like, if you're thinking about something like squatting or downward facing dog and the range of motion in your ankles seems to be limited, this kind of lunge is gonna give you information about where your tissues are tight. So you'll notice, do you feel compression on the front of the ankle in this lunge? Uh, do you feel tension on the back of the calf or towards the Achilles tendon in this lunge? Um, that's going to kind of help you ascertain, is this bone running into bone or is this tight tissue that I can stretch? Which will help you with things like downward facing dog, range of motion in the ankle, deep low squats, range of motion in the ankle. Uh, it's not always about hips. It's not always about hamstrings. 
uh, sometimes it's calf muscles and front of shin and surrounding muscles in the lower legs. All right, so we've been here for a few moments in our lunge. If you want to get a little bit deeper into this, like if you're still up on your hands, you want to walk down to your forearms, feel free. Uh, if you want to roll to the outer edge of your front foot, you could explore, and that might change the sensation in the leg. It might move up to the inner thigh. It does for me. I'm not saying it has to for you. It might. It might not. See if you can come back to that slow, deep breath in and out through the nose. Uh, we'll take about three more slow breaths here. What's also true is with longer holds like this that we do in a restorative practice or if you have a yin yoga practice, is that when you hold something for longer, uh, the sensation and the intensity in the body can often change over time during that specific hold. Like you might start to feel sensation moving around the body. If you're down on your forearms, walk up to your hands and then shift the hips back over that right knee, elongate through that left leg. A couple different things you can do here. You can hang out in a half split if you're familiar with that. I like to tuck my back toes and then sit my hips back towards that back ankle, kind of like you were doing a really lazy pistol squat if you're familiar with pistol squats, which are really hard to do, <laughs> so hard. Uh, we're not doing a pistol squat today. So working on lengthening front leg, posterior front leg, which would be the calf and the hamstring. Uh, let's take about three breaths here. You don't have to be all the way back on that right heel. You can just be resting the majority of the body weight over the hip and the knee. Uh, but if you do want that little bit extra for the toes of the back leg, you can tuck them under and shift the hips back towards that heel. Let's take one more breath here. All right, so now if you have the back toes tucked, untuck them. See if you can get the top of the ankle flat on your right leg. Okay, so right knee is bent. You're on the top of the right foot. And the majority of the weight, ideally, is resting on the mat. So I have most of my weight kind of leaning off to my left hip to allow my right knee to bend like this. You can always take a folded blanket underneath the left hip if range of motion in the ankle and the knee on the right side is limited. Okay, so maybe you lift the hip bones up a little bit to decrease that um, ability for that ankle to get flat and the knee to really extremely bend. Now, a couple of options here. You can sit upright if you're working with getting this ankle, toes pointing back behind you, flat, we're working with the range of motion in this right knee. Left leg, you can keep it pointing straight forward if you like. You can stay seated like this or you can lay back. Okay. And if you're gonna lay back, those of you that know quadriceps and hip flexors are pretty tight, you might wanna stay seated. For those of you that are like, no problem, I can come back to my hands behind my hips. I can come back to my elbows behind my hips. I can lay all the way back. Go for it if you want. What works best for me is to prop something. I still have this blanket underneath my left sits bone. And then when I come back, I'm going to add some height underneath my spine. So that my shoulder blades and my head has um, a lot less um, 
way to go. <laughs> the floor is coming up to meet me. Okay, so you can stay seated upright. You can build a support system behind the spine and head. All right, you can lay all the way onto the floor. So you build your own personal support system. What works for your knee? What works for your ankle? Now this shape we're going to hold a little bit longer. So we'll be here for another two minutes. Your work here is to focus on your breath. Just continually coming back to your breath over and over again. And to see if you can soften the tension of the muscles around the joint. So like for example, this feels like a lot in my quadricep, front of my thigh. I can feel some sensation in my knee joint. There's a little bit of tension, a little bit of extension in the knee joint itself, but I don't feel any sharp shooting pain. So I feel like, okay, I can breathe into my muscles. I can breathe into my joints. I can start to imagine relaxing here. And I'm not feeling any sharp shooting pain. So I'm feeling okay to stay. If you are feeling sharp shooting pain, especially in your knee or your ankle, I recommend adding height underneath the body, backing out, try not to go so far. Your body's always gonna talk to you. It's your job to listen. I'll take about three more breaths here. One more deep breath in. Deep breath out. If you're all the way on your back, you can press into your elbows, your hands and sit up. I find the best way to free this bent knee leg is to roll onto the left hip and then extend your right leg forward. So there's no weight on that right hip as you extend the leg forward. And then you can take your hands to the knees and the lower legs and just give a little gentle rub. This, all this does really is just um, improve circulation and blood flow in the joint, which is really great for healing any uh, scar tissue or anything that needs some extra blood flow. All right, so second side. Coming back to a tabletop, maybe you're patting the knees. We'll step the right foot forward this time. And spend some time maybe up on the hands, seeing if you can get this front thigh so right thigh towards the back of the calf and the knee actually moving forward towards the toes or even over the toes. And probably you're used to hearing in yoga practice, stack your knee over your ankle. And I've said that plenty of times. In this case, in a controlled safe environment where we're not moving rapidly in and out of a lunge and a vinyasa like flow, explore that range of motion. It's safe to do so. You're being still, you're being mindful. And see where you feel things in the lower leg of the right leg. Okay, so does it, again, does it feel like compression on top of that right ankle? Or does it feel like tension at the back of the calf? Uh, maybe it feels like a little bit of both.
Take a couple of deep breaths here. Feel free to stay in this shape, or if you would like to, if the body allows it, you can walk down onto elbows. You could explore rolling to the outer edge of that right foot, and that might change the sensation. The sensation might move somewhere new in the body. Just do your best to stay with your breath in and out through the nose. Can you relax things like shoulders and neck and jaw? It's really common for um, those areas of the body to get tense when you're working with the hips if, if your hips tend to be really tight. And when I say hips, I'm not just talking about one particular location, just like the core, 360 degrees, your hips, your hip socket, it, it's, it, it moves in all the directions, in all anatomical planes. So ball and socket joint. All right, if you're down on your elbows, walk back up to your hands. We'll take a moment to shift back to a half split variation. You can tuck those back toes under if you'd like and sit the hips back towards that left heel. That lazy looking pistol squat. <laughs> if you've never tried a pistol squat, I'd recommend, if you're curious, I recommend um, just Googling or look on YouTube how to do a pistol squat. Give it a try. Uh, Maybe look for some modifications. Let's take a few more breaths here. In your half split. And then if you've got those back toes tucked, untuck them so you're on the top of the foot. And now most of the weight, see if you can get it towards the hips, right? So you're not sitting on top of your ankle, you're not sitting on top of your heel. And then maybe you add a blanket or two underneath, or more height, however much height you need, underneath that right hip bone, so the hips feel relatively even. Yeah, so you're allowing your ankle and your knee more space in that way. You can sit up here, just like you did before, if you if you sat upright, and you could just take a moment to see, is this sustainable, or do I want to lean back? And your height can vary. You can pile as many pillows and blankets underneath your spine and your upper back and the back of your head as you need. Um, one other trick that works, like if you have a couch behind you, you can lean your elbows on a couch or a chair. I always just want to remind you that if you're leaning back on a chair, make sure it's not going to slide away from you. Like it doesn't have wheels on it or it's on a slippery surface. And then as you settle into stillness here, we have about two minutes in this shape. Slow, deep belly breathing in and out through the nose. Can you let go of any gripping in the muscles? Can you notice what kind of tension you're feeling? In the spectrum of pain, if you could categorize it in terms of like, this is a sharp shooting pain. This is a dull, achy pain. The dull, achy pain, can I breathe through it? Can I become still? Can I relax my muscles? 
typically it's okay to stay in a shape like that. Is it sharp shooting pain? Am I adding more tension and stress to my body? On the scale of relaxation and tension, is it way more tension than I'm able to breathe through? You probably need to back out. And then just remember that yoga practice is called a practice for a reason. It's not meant to be perfect. You don't need to look like me. I don't need to look like you. It's really an invitation to get to know your body and what it needs. And every day is different. We have about three more breaths here. Nice, slow, deep belly breaths. If you're all the way down on your back, start to make your way back up to a seat. Roll all of the weight onto your right hip so that you can free your left leg. Extend your left leg forward. Maybe take your hands rubbing around the knee joint and the ankle. That's feeling kind of tingly because we did just kind of like a tourniquet compress it. Now getting blood flowing back through that ankle um, is why it's helpful for things like scar tissue and getting more blood flow into those joints. Okay, last shape, last options. I'm gonna give, give us two options. Um, sitting up and folding forward into a shape like caterpillar. Okay, so you can leave your legs as they are and you can just simply fold forward. Uh, for most of us, especially if we're working at desks all day, it's really hard to do that because the pelvis is tilted back. Okay, so if that is you, Number one, take something underneath the sits bones, like a cushion or a pillow, so that your pelvis starts to tilt forward and you can hinge forward from your hips, not from your spine, but from your hips. Okay, so see the difference between this and this. And then option number two, if that just isn't gonna work, you can't get enough height underneath your hips, take your legs up the wall. Does the same thing passive stretch, you're working with your body where it is today. If you're staying seated in caterpillar and you have extra props around you, you can always slide something underneath the chest, underneath the forehead. This could be a stool, it could be a pile of pillows and blankets. So you can get creative at home with what you have around you. In the shape of caterpillar, I do not care how far or how close your hands get to touching your feet. Let your arms be passive, okay? Let this forward fold be passive. Okay, so legs up the wall or seated forward fold. Supporting your body in the best way for you today. Breathing in and out through the nose to the best of your ability. Relax your arms, relax your shoulders.
Let's take three more breaths here. If you're in your seated variation of this, you can start to uncurl the spine and sit up tall. If you've got your legs up the wall, feel free to stay there. That might be a nice way to take Shavasana. If you'd like to take Shavasana on your back, you can free your mat for the space for your body to lie down. Feel free to make any last minute um, shapes or adjustments or props. And then settle in, set us a timer for one minute in Shavasana. Relax the shoulders down the back, soften the throat, relax the back of the neck and the shoulders. Maybe close the eyes and just breathe in and out through the nose. Please feel free to take longer in your Shavasana. If you need to move on with your day, you can start to bend your knees. Maybe even hug your knees into your chest and just rock a little side to side here, especially since we went straight from that forward fold to Shavasana. And then rolling off to a side as you're ready. I'm pressing to an upright seat. We'll just briefly take a few moments to sit up tall. Notice how we feel and close out our practice. I'm sitting up nice and tall. Maybe the eyes are still closed. Drawing the shoulders over the hips, ears over the shoulders. A nice deep breath in and out through the nose. Notice how you feel and where you feel sensation in your body right now. And just like Shavasana, if this is feeling really good for you, feel free to stay in this seated meditation. If you'd like to close your practice with me now, you could join your hands together at your heart, bow the chin to the chest. Taking a moment to honor your effort and your practice with reverence and gratitude. May you remember that you will always be okay. May you find a light that guides you and keeps you safe. And may you have hope, help, and happiness along the way. Namaste, yogis. Thanks for uh, sticking with me through our technical difficulties today. <laughs> Appreciate you showing up. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and come back again soon. Take care of yourselves.